Hi guys, Ali here, this time with a video on World Wide Web. We are living a revolution since decades now, the biggest one perhaps in history of the world, which has touched life of billions and continues to do so. And it's called the World Wide Web. This video was part of introduction to HTML, but I realized the entire web development project is a chicken and egg thing, and World Wide Web definitely deserves its own. So here goes. So let's start off with the pre-internet era. So first in the 1960s came the predecessors of internet, and no, I do not mean browsers or web, just an attempt to connect giant computers of that time with wires and do some basic network operations. It was primarily developed for military use during Cold War by US Defense Department as a computer network that would continue to work even if portions of networks are lost in say a nuclear strike. What a dark history, right? At that time, it was called Advanced Research Project Agency Network, or ARPANET, a network that later evolved into today's internet. Universities also got involved in effort to share research. The first communication over ARPANET happened in 1969, when a student at UCLA tried to log in to mainframe at Stanford Research Institute. He successfully communicated letters L and O of the command login when the computer crashed, as he typed G. That initial hiccup was quickly fixed, and first permanent connection was made between UCLA and SRI in 1969. The 70s saw the effort of coming up with communication protocols, which are a set of rules to enable internet working. In 1974, the US Defense Research Organization, called DARPA, published a proposal for a protocol for packet network intercommunication, and used the term internet as a shorthand, and then the name stuck. Wondering what packet switching and other jargon means? Well, we won't cover it much in this video for sure as it's too low level stuff, but one should know that these protocols led to something called TCP IP, which is even used today as a standard network protocol, and at that time was adopted as standard for ARPANET in 1983. These protocols allow for networks with their own internal communication to talk to other networks on the internet in a standardized way. It's kind of like, English is not my mother tongue, but I made this video in English to reach out to a wider audience, which may not speak English as their first language at home, but understand it. So in a way, your home network might speak in a different language, but when talking to other networks, you can use a standard universal language both networks can use. TCP IP also standardizes addressing of computers, so sending a message to a single computer on a network is possible, just like the postal system, but sort of digital addresses. So summarizing, internet provided the foundation where computers could communicate, but another leap was required to get to the internet as we know today. One must understand the difference between internet and World Wide Web. Internet is the foundation the rules and protocols that allow machines to reliably send messages to each other over even unreliable networks. It has a ton of protocols like FTP, which allow browsing files on a remote computer, and Telnet, which allows using a remote computer program using a Telnet protocol. Until 1980s, they were the dominant protocols and are still used today. World Wide Web, in comparison, is an application layer protocol, or rather an information system that runs on the internet using multiple protocols under the hood and allows documents to be connected to other documents by hyperlink texts. In today's terminology, World Wide Web to internet is similar to say what Facebook is to Android. Internet came far before World Wide Web. The big leap came when scientists in CERN stepped in. World Wide Web all started in CERN in late 80s. In case you haven't heard about it, CERN is the largest particle physics laboratory in the world, founded in 1950s, where scientists from nearly 70 countries collaborate in cutting-edge research. Off-topic, it's home to Large Hadron Collider, which is a 27 km or 17 mile circumference particle accelerator, where atomic particles are accelerated in these tunnels, and then collide and the accident is studied to discover or research even smaller subatomic particles from the debris. It is cutting-edge research, but imagine what it was in the early days when new research was churning out like candies. Of course, research is meant to be shared with other scientists across the globe, but with no such thing as browsers or web, 
it was students and researchers logging into connected university or government servers to download files via FTP or Telnet. But that was too tedious, right? You tell someone using some way that I have uploaded a research file on your university website, feel free to browse. And you log into that server with their permission, of course, and browse the appropriate folders until you could find the file to transfer to your machine. Not impossible is perhaps the best way to describe it. Then a guy named Tim Berners-Lee at CERN wrote a proposal for the World Wide Web in late 80s, outlining the principal concept and defining terms behind the web. It suggested a hypertext project called World Wide Web, in which a web of hypertext documents could be viewed by applications called browsers. He went on to create the first ever web server and browser at CERN. The web server at that time was running on a computer which had a handwritten label in red ink reading, the machine is a server, do not power it down. It even had an address, info.cern.ch slash hypertext slash triple w slash theproject.html. The page was a demo page and contained links to information about the World Wide Web project itself. I casually read the last line, but did you get the main idea which is backbone of this revolution? In case not, it is the word link. Links are amazing. Links are revolutionary. Links are power. The power to jump while browsing a page in a browser to another page on another computer somewhere else. The browser would resolve the IP address of the computer or server it is hosted on, request the page using internet protocols, transfer it to your machine, and show it to you as a web page. You don't even notice so much is going on behind the scene. All you did was a click. Please appreciate the amazing seamlessness for a minute. It is that ease of use and simplicity that makes World Wide Web so powerful. You came to my video with a click somewhere without knowing where it is hosted and what went on behind the scene. Also note there were no search engines at that time. So all you had was a place to start and follow links but web made it so easy to even do the initial step. Right until Google revolutionized content search via its search engine and page rank algorithm, the world used to browse web using directories like Yahoo directory, which were basically links organized into various categories. That worked until the web had limited content, but was quickly destroyed by search engines as that system could not scale up with the growth of the web. The second amazing concept that must be appreciated was the browser. A piece of code or simply an application that copies over a text file from web server to yours, reads and interprets its contents, and shows them to you as a web page with hyperlinks, images, and tables. Not something a text editor could do. The hyperlinks effortlessly let you copy, read, display other documents from other machines, by a simple mouse click on an italicized underlying text in blue on an image with embedded link. This is backed up by an amazing tag called HTML, where markers in text indicate to browser how to render the document as a web page and how to behave when user interact with certain areas of web page, like change cursor to appropriate shape when hovering over a link to indicate it as a hyperlink. So in short, the text or HTML file that we copy from server contains content as well as interleaved instructions for browser on how to display and behave. The key to any amazing tech innovation is its simplicity of use and what is more simpler than this for an end user. No wonder it became the best technology revolution witnessed by the world and it hasn't stopped while I make this video. It was with these simple startup innovations that scaled up and caught attention of billions, starting from research and defense networks more and more web servers with content of all kind came online, and today it's hard to imagine our lives without the internet and World Wide Web. With scaling of web, scaling of innovation also took place, and things quickly started to get out of hands, and all kind of incompatible technologies mushroomed. To bring some order to this chaos, organizations developed to consolidate and recommend standards and specifications for the internet and the web. Some of these organizations even govern aspects of the internet, not just the web. It is good to know the names and role of these standards and organizations, even if it is not purposefully required. So these standard organizations include the World Wide Web Consortium, or W3C, 
which publishes recommendations for the World Wide Web. Web Hypertext Application Technology Working Group, or WWG, which develops and maintains a number of web-related technical standards, including living standard of HTML and related technologies. Then comes Internet Engineering Task Force, which is a standard organization for the internet and is responsible for the technical standards that make up the Internet Protocol Suit, or TCPIP. International Organization for Standardization, ISO, you might have heard the name before. It develops and maintains various technology standards, not uh, necessarily specific to internet or the web. Then there are standards published by ECMA International, and you would hear a lot about this organization when you venture into scripting for the web. The Unicode Consortium that publishes Unicode Standard and various Unicode Technical Reports, or UTRs. Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, IANA, which maintains name and number registries. Let's conclude our video with a word of gratitude to early founders whose foresight, efforts to standardize and simplify human-machine interaction got us living the digitalized world. This video just covered the basics or starting points, as we shall see in other videos on this channel, how the web infrastructure is organized and interacts to let us consume countless content and services. If you like the video, please consider to like and share, and also do subscribe to be notified of upcoming content related to web development and advanced technologies. Thank you and goodbye.